TNA Impact Wrestling for May 19th, 2011. So TNA has a new look. Impact Wrestling all over blue and white. Uh, kind of don't like this look. It looks too much like SmackDown. It's, hopefully t now Raw will go back to having red robes. We got a new look, new name, new everything. The only thing that's not new is the way the show is run. Because we kick things off with Immortal coming out to the ring and talking, 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 talking. Like they always do every... I don't know, this might change eventually. I mean, things aren't obviously aren't going to change right away. We got to slow down to it, so... So the opening is basically just Immortal talking and the X Division stars coming out and basically this just sets up for a bunch of matches that are going to happen for the night. So while it might be a typical TNA opening, I mean at least it sets up for a bunch of matches that are going to happen so can't really complain I guess. And they're trying to rebuild the X Division once again and really kind of feels like it's going to be hard to do that. I mean, TNA used to have a great X Division. They used to have a great Knockouts Division, great Tag Team Division. TNA used to have a great everything, and they just fucked it all up, and now they have to rebuild it all again. Hopefully, this new Impact Wrestling era can rebuild itself and bring it back to the good old days where they used to have everything. What better way to kick things off than was a TNA Knockout match? LAX on commentary. Now, I'm just going to say this about Jose's commentary. Um, he wasn't as annoying as he was before. He was a little annoying still, but not as annoying to the point where it made my head hurt. So, I guess that's a little bit of an improvement. Jose seemed a little bit okay. He seemed a little bit good on commentary. Uh, but what I don't understand is why TNA has to do a split screen. Like, if wrestling matters... If that's what you're going for, wrestling matters, then why do we need to have a split screen showing the commentators talking while we're having a wrestling match? The match lasts 4 minutes and 8 seconds. Not a lot I could say about it. Brooke is improving a little bit. And again, we get this cameraman again. This cameraman that just loves to zoom in and I uh, love this cameraman. Max and Jeremy Fuck decide to put aside their whole problems that they've been having. And I guess this is good. I mean, everyone was complaining. TNA is breaking up their tag teams. They're splitting up these great tag teams just to make a weak division look stronger. Well, I guess we can't complain. We were complaining that they were splitting up the tag teams and now they just put them both back together. We forgot about the problems with Ink Ink. We're forgetting about the problems with Generation Me. We're putting them both back together, having them be a tag team, and keeping the tag team division alive while also keeping the X division being rebuilt. So, I guess we really can't complain about this. I mean, really, do we want to see these guys as singles competitors? Abyss versus Kazarian for the X Division Championship. This match lasted 5 minutes and 4 seconds. And in the end, Abyss is crowned the new X Division Champion. And Taz said, oh, the internet's going to blow up tonight. And I, I don't get how people can really complain about this I mean it is the X Division X Division is supposed to be about no limits it's they're not the cruiserweights they're not all just supposed to be these small little guys that whatever so Abyss winning the X Division championship I don't know it kind of feels good and just in my opinion it kind of feels good to have Abyss with the X Division championship it puts more spotlight on them definitely because now all these X Division guys are gonna have to beat Abyss to be the X Division champion now so I don't know I don't have it too many complaints about it plus it's good for storyline purposes so not a lot of complaints for me honestly during the backstage segment was Angelina Love and Winter I was just hoping for a kiss between them and it paid off. We got a freaking petty kitty little kiss. Like, what the fudge was this? Like, I'm glad there was a payoff at least a little bit. But come on, something better than that. Winter, you have this girl under your control. Do whatever the fuck you want her. Don't fucking... Uh, seriously, like, what the... F uh, I hope, like, as weeks go on... Like, we keep on doing this every week. Just get these little backstage little segments between them. And every week, it gets better than the next. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm really hoping happens. I'm begging you, TNA, to please make this happen. Every week, just...
build it up, make it better than ever, and eventually lead up to this great make out between them. And just really, we need that. We really need that out of this. Handicap match, Velvet versus Winter and Angelina. This match goes four and a half minutes. Now, on the match itself, mm, Winter did good. Angelina, she kind of gets out of character a lot during the match. Like, you can tell, like, there are moments where she's, like, completely feeling it, completely in character, and then there are moments where she's just, like, normal. Can't really blame her. It is kind of hard to look creepy and with a blank face while you're running around and getting clothesline and jumping all around the ring, so I guess I can understand but eh, I'll give her credit for at least trying to play this as well, best as she can. We got the surprise return of ODB. ODB is back in TNA. So along with trying to rebuild the X Division, putting back their tag team division, they're also trying to fix their knockouts division once again. But hopefully we see a complete rebuilding of the knockouts division make it great make it like it once was because tna seriously you really used to have the best divisions of all time you really gotta start rebuilding it and it looks like you're on your way to doing that so props to that so in 48 seconds samoa joe squashes amazing red yes this is what wrestling really does matter 48 seconds wrestling does matter so we're continuing this rivalry between crimson and samoa joe Hmm. At least they're good wrestlers. I mean, the rivalry's not a whole lot to talk about, but they should end up having a really good match whenever they do decide to settle this rivalry. I normally don't pay attention to backstage segments in TNA, but this one was pretty hilarious. The Eric Young with Brooke and Gunner, this was pretty hilarious. And of course, Brooke is fucking hot. I don't care what she's in. Like, as long as she's on my TV, I'm happy. Only thing I'm going to say about this, holy freak, Mr. Kennedy really does look like Sting from the 80s. That is freaking incredible. That is divine. How the hell did they do that? So overall, this episode of Impact Wrestling, really, it wasn't all that different from what TNA has been the last few months. But again, we got to give it a little bit of time at least before they start really changing and putting emphasis on Impact Wrestling. And for putting an emphasis on wrestling and making their slogan, Wrestling Matters, we got 20 minutes of wrestling tonight. 20 minutes out of an hour and a half show minus... The Will we see an improvement in that as weeks go on? I kind of doubt it. I bet money that every single week we're going to open up the same way with some mortal. But, I don't know, maybe they can prove me wrong. No the way there's been... MTO was MTO more reviews saying yada 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 blah 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 the end